What's up, football-loving maniacs? Time for another edition of Three Honest Lads. Yes, we know the season's over, but it's also the most wonderful time of the year because if you didn't know, someone's playing this week, and if you didn't know, somebody else is playing this week, but there's only one player that matters right now, and it's, I always forget, we, we're going to figure this out one day. It's the person over there. Person over there, gentlemen, by the name of, we're going to start off properly. I would like to introduce to you a very nice person from what I've heard. Goes by Christopher Weehan. Just kidding. Chris Weehan, what's going on, brother? How are you, dude? Not much, not much, Devin. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, man. You know, we, we were just chatting briefly before you came on. We don't always get the opportunity to, to talk to the people that we want to. Sometimes we got to talk to the people that we have to. I love John Hackworth and Danny Cruz. You know, nobody really wants to talk to them, but we have to. But we've admired your play from afar. We've seen you for a long time, dude. And, and obviously, for New Mexico United this year, things didn't necessarily pan out. So I'd just like to start there because, first off, you screwed me on my pick em because I had you guys going all the way to final. Thank you for that one. But just walk me through what was the season like for you guys because dealing with trials and tribulations of COVID and travel or lack thereof and the bubble and the quarantining, and yet still, you guys have to do a job. You have to go out and be professional and get results. Yeah, it was a, it was a wild ride. Um, you know, obviously going back to, to the very beginning when, when you hear the news that, um, that we had to postpone the season for, for obvious reasons, um, that was tough. And then, you know, quarantine was, wasn't easy because you never really had an end date um, on, on when things were going to get back going. And then, and then for us, certainly, uh, it, it, we're super grateful to start playing games and getting back on uh, the season underway. And then, um, you know, it was like, uh, there was like someone, someone was dangling the carrot in front of us. Uh, I'm not going to mention any names, but someone was dangling the carrot in front of us. Uh, you know, Oh, if you guys do this, you'll play home games. Um, <laughs> and we thought things were going well for, for a little while. And then, um, it was just uh, everything was always like that carrot was always getting taken away from us. So um, it was tough at certain points to, to, to continue to hope for home games and then to continue for that hope to be uh, taken away. But certainly something that I think everyone is really proud of what we did this year and, and how we, how professional we handled everything, given the fact that we were on the road for 16 straight games and we didn't have a single positive case. It was something to be really proud of as well as the results that we had. Yeah. It's one of the more frustrating things from an announcer standpoint, how, you know, we get an opportunity to experience so many different venues and the fact that we didn't get to the lab this year or even get to see it was, was a frustrating one for sure. Um, I want to talk about your background for a second in case any of our football loving maniacs have been living under a rock um, for the past couple of years. University of New Mexico Lobos, Conference USA Rookie of the Year, All-Conference Selection, All-Region. You don't get drafted, but you do sign with startup Ian Russell in Reno, at which point in time you tie the assist record, uh, which at that point in time was with Matt Dahlman. Uh, fantastic season. Um, I believe you were USL Rookie of the Year. Then 2018 mm -hmm. comes, San Jose signs you. And I think one people, if they don't recognize, only because I know this gentleman personally, Stevie Ralston signed you and then basically had you for the season. And from my interpretation, the way that I saw it was you kind of got caught in between two systems where you've got Ian, you've got Steve, opportunities on both sides, but didn't necessarily break through into San Jose, but we're still there a lot, right? Yeah, it was, it was um, you know, at first I was getting loaned to Reno quite a bit and, and it made sense because, you know, I needed minutes, I needed minutes. And so that was good. Um, and then when I, I did start to break in. It was always, it was, it's hard. It's hard to break into the MLS and it's hard to, as a, a young American player to, to get consistent minutes. Um, and, you know, I think at times I did well and at times I, I didn't do well. And, and, you know, you're sometimes you only get one opportunity and, and that's kind of how I felt in San Jose. And unfortunately just never really, uh, really got the minutes I, I was hoping for uh in San Jose and uh spent spent I think 14 games in Reno for for Ian and and um yeah it was just kind of getting stuck in between two two places so it was, it was a really tough year for my career I've always wanted to ask you this knowing how early a lot of deals are done behind the scenes um I'll get to that in a second did you know that you were already signing for New Mexico prior to Matias coming to San Jose no, um, that's actually was kind of a wild off season. So, you know, after the season ended in San Jose, um, I, I had a meeting with the, the GM at, at which point, 
I was told, you know, we're not sure. Um, and we're not sure turned into the final day of, of, you know, the timeline where the MLS has to submit the rosters. That final day was when I finally got the word that, Hey, you're not gonna, you're not going to be back with us. So that was end of November at that point. Um, you know, my, my agent, um, Andrew Wiedemann did, did a phenomenal job. He got me into preseason with Montreal actually. Um, so I spent two weeks with Montreal down in Florida. Um, at which point that didn't work out as well. And, and behind the scenes, um, had a deal with New Mexico to where if I didn't sign with Montreal, then I would, then I would end up in, in New Mexico. So when I got the word in Montreal, it wasn't going to work out. Then, then, uh, things quick, quickly picked up with New Mexico. You go to New Mexico United uh, past two seasons. We talked about this year. Last year, I want to focus in on something with all due respect to the USL side of things. I want to talk about the the Open Cup run. I was there for a lot of your guys' games, um, including the loss in Minnesota, which obviously didn't turn out the way. You didn't have Kev. A lot of things going on there. What was that like for you as a player, though, just that magical run in our nation's fantastic tournament? That was fun. Um, you know, Anytime, you know, the, the cool thing about that story, too, is we would played all those games on the road as well. Yeah. We didn't have a venue to host any um, Open Cup games. So went to Phoenix, you know, uh, snuck by on PKs. Um, or I can't remember if it was Colorado or, or, or Phoenix. Anyways, um, Phoenix. that first game against, <laughs> against the, the Rapids was a lot of fun. And, and I thought that was our best game of the tournament. Um, I thought we played really, really well. Um, I thought we were definitely deserving of, of the result. And uh, it's super exciting for our fan base. I think that was uh, big for, for this fan base to just really get a, get a sense of what we were doing. And um, Dallas was a weird game. Uh, and snuck behind that one, too. But that, that, um, playing in Minnesota was an incredible experience. What a stadium that is. And um, they, they had some good fans at that game and, and um, really cool environment. And just – by all means, they were they were the better team. Definitely a, a really good team and, and a tough team to play against. Remind me, and I feel terrible that I can't remember off the top of my head. I should have looked at my board. Do you remember what the name, the moniker gave the club for all the the um, patrons that flew out? Lucky something? Do you remember that? No, no. Yeah, it was like the Lucky 302 or Lucky 300 or whatever it was. And it was all the people that were able to get into that package that jumped on the plane and, and kind of yeah. put everything together. Super, super cool. Um, Prior to my next question, which is obviously going to be addressing the elephant in the room and the opportunity coming forth, I'm just kind of curious your thoughts on the recent news, Reno 1868 ceasing operations. Obviously, a lot of talent there, a lot of memories for you. Ian's going to be moving on. Just kind of your thoughts on the way that everything played out. It, it came as total shock to me. I, didn't, I had no idea. Um, and it's, it's really sad because – you know, it's a, it's a small network team, but they had a great fan base. And I feel, you know, you know, I feel for so many people, one, one, the players that maybe thought that they were going to come back um, for Ian, you know, he had, he had built a great program over four years, you know, had made the playoffs. They won the West this year in the, in the regular season. Um, you know, every, every, Everyone always asks, you know, how did Ian put together such a good team out there? I don't know. He's, he's a good coach, great coach. I have tons of respect for him, but he, he knew how to put together a roster every year. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful for the opportunity he gave me as a player to, to jumpstart my career. Um, you know, surely something will come for him. Um, but just really sad for, for that community and, and that program and, and what, everyone that was a part of it had done out there. And I don't know that all the reasons behind it other than probably financial reasons, um, you know, and, and we can get into that another day, but it's just, it's just really sad for, for the USL, um, for Reno, for those fans and, and everyone that was a part of that organization. Chris, a lot of the deals that are done in this league, although things are changing and definitely changing for the better, a lot of the deals that are done in this league aren't necessarily done this early. And I understand COVID can have some things to do with it, but just kind of walk me through, if you'd be so kind, and tell your story of, you know, fantastic job done in New Mexico and the decision to go back home. If people don't know, you're from the area, very, very close, and now an opportunity to play for your, your hometown team, uh, a stack squad that fell just short of the playoffs, and just kind of give everybody a peek behind the curtain. Yeah, um, you know, without going into too many details, it was done very early, and I'm I'm super grateful for that. And I'm, 
I'm really appreciative of, of Orange County being, being uh, able to put together this deal as early as they did. Um, but it, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy to, to tell Troy and, and, you know, Peter Trevisani that, that I was moving on um, because it's such a special place. You know, this organization um, is really fun to be a part of. This community is really fun to be a part of. I've, I've been here for six years, um, but it was just the right opportunity. Um, I'm really, really happy with what was presented to me from, from Orange County. And, and um, it's a club that, that I, uh, I was going to those, those games in, when I was in high school. I was going and watching um, when they were the OC Blues. Yep. Um, and I was going to those games at UC Irvine. I was sitting in the, in the concrete bleachers watching them play. And um, the opportunity to go back and play close to, to family and friends is something – um, I'm really excited for, you know, my, my wife and I are really excited to move to California and it's, uh, an organization I have tons of respect for, for what they've done on the field. I think they've always put together a good roster and I'm, and I'm really excited to be a part of, of what we're doing out there. Chris, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask, but just some notes here. Is there any truth to the rumor that you're leaving New Mexico because Josh Suggs came on the Three Honest Lads podcast first? Yeah, that I was <laughs> devastated. <laughs> we we had some fun with Suggsy. Is he like as country boy as he seems? Kind of laid back, just super nice, and everything's fine until he whacks him on the field. Yeah, he he is. You know, he's uh he's true true to his colors is how I look at Josh Suggs. You know, he's uh takes a ton of pride in in, in who he is as a person, and he he carries himself with a ton of professionalism. And and uh, I I really enjoyed playing with Suggs last year. He's a great captain. Let's go back to you for a second. So I know you said without going into too much detail, so I'm going to prod a little bit. Whatever you want to talk about and feel comfortable is totally fine. You can tell me to go myself. Good news is we have a producer that's going to edit that out later. Um, and I'll be, I'll be just as happy. I'm just kind of curious. You said the deal got done early. Fantastic stuff. That obviously is giving you some stability for your family, especially given the day and age that we live in. Did you always know that it was going to be Orange County? Were you just – you were approached and, and you wanted to go home? Was there a thought maybe you would leave New Mexico either way? Um, no, I think that it, in my mind, um, where I'm at in my career and as a person and where my wife and I are at in our life, you know, we, we see starting a family soon. And, and um, you know, I think – the especially during COVID when when you're quarantined and you're stuck to your apartment um you start having all those thoughts and I certainly really had the thought of, of being back home and closer to family and and with the idea of us starting a family soon I think being closer to family makes a lot of sense um so in, in my mind it was always uh it was always Orange County um as long as Orange County wanted me and and they did, so I was really happy about that. But I think if if you know who who knows what would have happened if if Orange County said um, no, we're okay. It's it's hard to say what would have happened. Word to the wise, by the way, if you do have a child and end up being a homeowner, and however that plays out, that behind me, that used to be a front door. So always get the remodel and renovation done before you have a kid, because this is the front <laughs> of my house right now. I'm not kidding, literally. The front yard is right there. It's insane. I have to go out the side door. It's crazy. <laughs> it's insane. That's a whole nother conversation. Um, yeah. Let's go back to Orange County for a second. And, and obviously the opportunity to come home, fantastic. Good coaching staff. We've seen the partnership they've created overseas. I'm kind of just curious your experience, if any, with, with some of the boys on the roster, um, some heavy MLS veterans. And then you've got guys that they have an MLS background. They've been in the league for quite some time. Like Aiden, for me, one of the one of the better midfielders in the entire league. They bring back Ugo this year. Darwin's had a good season. A lot of talent there. Just kind of your experience with any of those boys? Um, so no, no experience with um, the ones that you mentioned, just from playing against them. Obviously, yep. a ton of respect for Darwin. I played against him when we were in college um, a, f a few times as well with Orange County. I think he's a phenomenal player, an exciting player. Um, same with Ugo and, and, and Aiden Quinn, I, um, I think is a phenomenal midfielder. Like you said, top, one of the top midfielders in, um, in the league. And, and also, you know, I think the likes of Michael Orozco, ton of experience there, really excited to play with him. I, I've heard nothing but great things about him as a player and as a person um, from players that have played with him. Um, and um, 
the chance to play with Thomas Edavoldson as well. I think he's um, a phenomenal player. He just scores tons of goals. And, uh, you know, I, I, I like our chances of linking up together. I think um, I hope to, to be on the receiving end of, of passes from him. And, and likewise, I hope to, to set him up for a few goals as well. So all those players, um, especially those last two, I'm really excited to be playing with. And um, the chance to join, like you said, a, a really veteran group um is really exciting but unfortunately I haven't had the chance to play with them the only one from this last year that I have played with is Seth Kasipley um, yeah. really good really good friend of mine um great player I have tons of respect for him and uh someone I enjoy hanging out with is he just going to continue to grow that those luscious locks longer and longer I don't know what the decision <laughs> on that was I, I I I asked him like where'd that come from he doesn't even know he just let it go good for him and we all yeah. did it just some people had the the courage to continue it going um, yeah Let's go personal again. I've got your stat lines here in front of me. Uh, I talked about the 2017 season with Reno. I'm going by league, by the way. I'm not league in playoffs. I'm not doing anything in terms of open cup or, or outside competitions. 30 appearances, eight goals, 12 assists. As mentioned, you were the rookie of the year. That was alongside the likes of Antoine Openo, Dane Kelly, and that ridiculous offense that you guys put together. Most of the players have gone about their ways, including Seth, like you mentioned. So in 2018, you get the opportunity with Reno excuse me, with San Jose, lone Torino, as you mentioned, double digits, 14, four and three for them. Six appearances for San Jose, only two starts, but on the bench a boatload of times. And that's kind of the lost in translation. We're difficult to break through, but still an opportunity for you. Then New Mexico, the past two seasons, 45 appearances, 17 goals, 12 assists. I guess you decided to have two off years and um, just kind of <laughs> Do you hear those numbers? And, and when you look at the accolades you've, you've kind of brought in the past couple of seasons, a pretty highly touted recruit coming out of college, do you look at the people at MLS and go, what the f***? <laughs> got to be honest, man. It, yeah, I mean, in, in so many words, I do, to be honest. Um, you know, not to take away from this league, I think this, this league is growing. Um, and I think the players are getting better and better. And... But at the same time, I, I tell everyone this, of course, my goal is to play in the MLS. And, and if my goal wasn't to play in the MLS, I still wouldn't be, wouldn't be pursuing playing soccer at, at, as, as I am. And I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be as working as hard as I am and, and pushing to put, um, you know, goals and assists together like that. Um, but yeah, of course, it's frustrating. You don't, you don't, I, it's the same thing when I went through the, the recruiting process and, and, um, coming out of college, you just don't understand. You just don't know. Yeah. I went undrafted and, and I got no answer. And, and it's fine because when I look back, getting drafted is, is just a, 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 someone saying, hey, come to preseason. That's basically <laughs> what it is. Yeah. Um, but when you're coming out of college, you don't understand that. You, know? you want to get drafted and you want to see your name and it feels good. But it's the same thing. You just don't, you don't get any answers. So um, that part is frustrating. That part is hard. I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, that's my goal to play in the MLS and, and, and to, get a, to get a shot. And I, and I have my, my reasons for it. And, and especially when I'm in that environment, like I was in San Jose, um, there's a lot of things that we could go into in, in terms of that. But, but my, my, you know, at the, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm really excited about this opportunity with Orange County. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited to get there and continue to work hard and, and hopefully uh, help this team win a lot of games. Chris, a couple of fun ones and we'll get you out of here. Um, not taking anything away from the opportunity at Orange County, but in a different world, you don't sign with Orange County and you have to leave New Mexico for whatever reason it is. You have to get out. Where do you go and why? Uh, probably San Diego. It's probably the closest thing to home. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll take Plus that. It's a great place to live. Yeah. How about, how about teams that you've played against? Let's talk about specific players, players that have marked you people that you really admire for the, for the work that they did against you, push you off your game, really push you to another level. Um, Richie Ryan this year, especially. Um, he's one that stands out for sure. Yeah. Richie's an honorary lad. We love, Richie. Yeah. we love us some Richie Ryan. Um, yeah. How about the rivalry that developed between you and Phoenix, only two years, of course, but some really spirited games. I think that might be the easy answer here in terms of teams that going up against, you really wanted to beat, you had, there was something special there, you look for another gear. If Phoenix is the answer, give me another one. 
Um, this year, developed was definitely El Paso. I think just seeing the them groups. as many times as we did, and and just how close we are to them in proximity. They're the closest we have um, team we play. They're only four hours down the road. So, um, plus, I think I think they bring a little sense of like, you know, fuck these guys, and we we kind of bring the same thing. You know, we bring the same like, this is the last team we want to lose to. <laughs> Fair enough, and yeah. I and I can totally understand that. Let's talk managers for a second. You haven't had the ability to play underneath Braden Cloutier yet. However, we'll run through the list. Stevie Ralston, as I mentioned, um, that was, of course, when he was at San Jose. You had Ian Russell for the two seasons as well, whether being signed to them or on loan, and then Troy Lesane, 2019-2020, now Braden. Favorite manager by chance? Favorite manager. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. You're, you're – you're... I'm, I'm going to get some grief for this. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Well, I got to throw Steve out because he was, he was a uh, majority of the assistant coach. Um, he was the interim for like the last six games of the season yep. in San Jose. Um, and then he sent me on loan those last six games. So uh, no, great guy, really good player. He could still jump in training and, and do really well. So tons of respect for that guy. Um, I enjoyed playing, playing for him. Um you know, they're, they're, they're different, Ian and, and Troy. They're different in their own way. Um, you know, but I have, you know, a ton of respect for both of them on different regards. Troy for, for believing in me and giving me an extra shot and, and pitching me on this idea of New Mexico United. And, and he was true to his word in that. And, and Ian for, for giving me um, – Ian taught me a lot of good lessons as a, as a pro, especially being young. And he gave me an opportunity, and that's, that's all I could ask for. So – I'm not, I'm going to be political on this answer. So that's all you're going to get out of me. <laughs> fair, fair enough. I'll throw myself under the bus there. Don't worry. Um, last one for you, man. You talked about family and obviously family is a very important thing. And, and you're in an area of your life and your career where you have the ability to have a family. You talked about your wife and now settling some roots down back home. Let's remove that for a second. And I'm not taking anything away from that because I admire it. I know exactly how you feel. Um, if you could play for any MLS team, whether it be a coach, a system, geographic location, what team would it be and why? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think, um, gosh, that's a tough question. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. It's a really hard question. You know, I, I love to say the galaxy. That's where, that's where the team, I'm the biggest fan of them because uh, that's just who I grew up watching. Um, but probably not recently. I wouldn't want to, wouldn't want to be there. It seems a little, they're in trouble water right now. That's not your um, system either. <laughs> no, it's not my system. Um, you know, I think to be honest, uh, sporting Kansas city, I think I would like to play in that system. I think it's a system that I, I could do really well. in, And I think, uh, I've heard tons of great things about Peter Vermees and, and the way he runs his organization. Um, and I think he, he, he gives players a true opportunity and that's kind of the one thing that I look for. And, and I think they play a little bit more of a style that would suit my game. Um, so that's probably the one place I would choose. I love that. There you have it. Chris Weehan, kind enough to join three honest lads. Just remember Reno, San Jose, Lone Reno, New Mexico United, now Orange County SC, see what they're able to do in 2021. Chris, keep it up, man. We love your play. Keep pushing, dude. May all your dreams come true. And hopefully we'll see you again in the future, bud. Appreciate it. Thanks, Devin. Cheers, man.